Right then, it's time, ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Back by unpopular demand. Um, I asked a question on the internet, shall we go ahead and uh, and preview the drivers for this coming season in British Touring Car Championship? Um, and people said, yeah, give it a go, mate. That'll be sound. Nice one, I've missed them. Um, anyway, you're having it large. Um, so my name's Paul O'Neill. Good to see you all. Um, and I'm going to ask a particular three-time champ about why he's not racing this year and also what he thinks of all the other drive uh, other all the other driver lineups it's been a long time in it stuttering look at my hair by the way what's that it's like a it's like a house fire I need to sort that out really don't i anyway i've got my cup of coffee and i think have you seen this actually it's quite cool don't know if you can see it there's paul o'neill race one winner warren tim harvey second warren hughes did you know that I'd won a race? It was on Teletext, it was that long ago. <laughs> anyway, I'm sat on my drive. And uh, yeah, let's give uh, let's give the main man a shout himself. I just texted him saying, are you ready? And he was like, yeah. Oh my God, tunes are on. Here we go. Hello. Hello. How's it going, Matthew Neal? Uh, it's going all right, mate. It's Monday morning ish. So it's okay. Cool. <laughs> hey, listen, a couple of things, fella. Thank you for coming along. You've been on uh you've been on this before with us and we uh we chatted before a race weekend. I can't remember who it was actually. I think it might have been Snetterton. But um secondly, mate, what's the world gonna do without Matt Neal? Uh, Matt Neal's got not going anywhere, so um yeah. Oh you racing? Oh, I don't know, mate. <laughs> The world existed before Matt Neal, the world existed afterwards, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm still going to be around and about, so, um, yeah. You bet. You better add me. You sound well miserable, mate. Are you, are you fully miserable because you're not racing, or uh, have you just like... No, I'm all right. Um, no, I'm, I'm uh, 100%, mate. I'm just focusing on stuff. You know, I'm I'm well busy, considering we're all locked down and everything. I'm just flat out, so yeah, that's sort of keep, keeping my, my mind occupied. Yeah, no, fair enough, mate. Um, listen, what about it's weird, isn't it? Because because Jason obviously had his year off last year uh, with what everything that's going on. It didn't work for him commercially. Um, you're having your year off uh, this year, and kind of it takes the shine weirdly for for me as a fan and a presenter, and a, it takes the shine off off British touring cars if 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 there isn't that sparring partner in there is it does it feel the same to you or are you like are you sick of that question by the way <laughs> no, maybe it's time maybe that's just save the writings on the wall because we've been getting on recently well not getting on. i wouldn't say getting on but you know we talk to each other and that, so. um and we've actually raced shoulder to shoulder a bit recently without driving into each other with uh you know the last couple of years which is it's quite alien but, oh, yeah i guess so you know i've had a lot of i've had a lot of people on saying that you know i must admit yeah and i think it it probably hurts jason's brand to be honest more than it hurts your brand in my particular view because people want to see jason going at you and you going at him um but for me it looks like you're just happy to be out there racing whatever but jason always seems to have a, a right go at you mate so is that what you're going to miss this year yeah, I, I said, you know, it's, uh, you know, we spoke again last year and we said, well, isn't it time we fell out again? <laughs> it's been too long. <laughs> and um, I'm going to think for an easy life, me, but if, you know, if you come at me, I'm going to come back at you. And Jason knows that. <sighs> so he would just, he'd have a dig at me knowing I'm going to react. And um, that's how I brought my kids up. That's how I was just sort of brought myself up. But um <laughs> yeah we'll see there'll be there'll be other opportunities won't there yeah no of course there will mate you two will be going at it in there in the year 2058 when the cars are electric very <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, nice my friends yeah <laughs> um and just the last question on that matt are you um can you i know nothing's guaranteed in life but me as a again as a fan i always i'm a british touring car fan mate you know that i've got like place mats of you and your old nissan premiera and i was lucky enough to be your teammate but and that all goes out the window when I'm racing against you. But you know, I'm a fan first. First of all, I'm a fan, and I, and, I, and I'll be gutted, mate, if you don't if you don't make it back on the grid. I know you can't guarantee it, but is it is it a likely thing that it will happen? Is it just a set of circumstances that you know people don't understand why you're not racing? To be honest, mate, it's a little bit of a perfect storm, mate, um, which hasn't helped by Honda pulling out. Yeah. Um, 
and there are licenses available it becomes availability of you know we, we all need a license everyone needs a license to um to put a car on the grid there are licenses available um and um they didn't want to release any so mm -hmm. that and that would have that sort of curtailed we, we got sponsorship in place uh to run a third car and um good to go but then it was um it was sort of curtailed by um yeah so that's about as, as much as i should probably say yeah. without um digging big holes really yeah no, not for me but for other people i know mate I, listen i you know I, I fully understand and that it was a bit of a silly question to ask you but i know you'll always talk the truth because i just feel again that you know things have happened and you're not out there and people just look for blame don't they because it's like yeah it's, i mean the same with with, with uh, camo i'm gutted not to have him with us mm. and uh, we could have had a super team here and um you know it is what it is it, it's not for the, the hard work we we put in and we actually got everything in place got everything and um it just got got turned down for reasons i still don't know why um mm. so yeah it's it's what we got yeah uh paul and you know you just got to get on with it really haven't you yeah for sure mate listen i'll leave it at that because it's not it's no one else's business mate to be fair what goes on behind closed doors right matthew i know that you haven't got loads of time mate so we'll crack on with with um the little the little preview of the season i think you're perfect for it treble champion i'm going to ask you about all the drivers and the teams, we'll get through it, mate. And I just want to ask a couple of questions about, uh, you know, who you think is going to be strong, who's not, who could improve maybe, um, and who shouldn't be on the grid. Jason Plato probably are going to say, aren't you? Um, right. <laughs> let's get, let's start first with, um, with West Surrey Racing BMW. Um, I've got a sheet here because I forgot, I forgot who's driving what because there's been so many changes, uh, which is great for a pundit, isn't it? But, um, West Surrey Racing BMW, in my opinion, mate, They'll be licking their wounds, won't they, from last year? Do you, do you think that's a do you think that's the right thing to say? Yeah, I think they probably stole defeat out the jaws of victory, didn't they? Really, they had a good car. Um, they had the experience and the and the mileage under their belts with rear wheel drive, which the others didn't. Um, yeah, and it slipped through their fingers. So mm. I would I'd imagine they'll be they'll be back with vengeance. Yeah, and I think there's no better team, is there? Really, with Dick Bennett and and all their engineering prowess to come back fighting because it looked let's not beat around the bush it looked like it was the wet weather side of things um that maybe curtailed that that championship for them or am i right in saying that you know maybe it was it the dry running as well was it the overall performance of the infinity that that beat you know colin turkington and um and the bmw team you know something uh, the infinity was incredibly soft <clears throat> which worked where where rear wheel drives haven't worked in the wet i mean it did really work in the wet but I had a I had a good race long dice with Ashley at um, at Knock Hill mm. in the third race, and I went up to him afterwards in Park Fermi. And normally when you when you get approached by another driver in in Park Fermi and they put your hand on your shoulder, um, it's there's normally something's going to kick off. <laughs> but I went up to Ashley and I put my hand on his shoulder and I said, I just want you to know, you're driving absolutely amazingly at the minute, and I think, you know, I'll put my money on you to win it. Um, and he was sort of a bit taken aback about it, but he is, he was driving. You know what? He was hungry. Mm. He was evil hungry. And you could see that the way he drove and the way the, you know, the, the uh, performance he extracted out that infinity. Um, I was, I was very impressed. Yeah. And I think that, that sort of, that swung it in, in their, their, their side. Yeah. I remember you telling me that story actually. And that was, that was that was in the middle of the season, I think, wasn't it? And you know, what we see on the television is completely different to what a driver sees because you speak to other drivers, don't you, that are a bit further down the pack and they haven't really or someone's come through the pack who should be up the front. You speak to them and they say, My honestly, I thought I was gonna die in that race and you're like, It wasn't that bad, was it? You it didn't look like you had too many skirmishes, but drivers see things that the T V will never capture. <laughs> I think I think me and Ashley were fighting for ninth and tenth place that race, um, but you can see the attitude. You can watch the attitude of the car, what it's doing, how he's how he's muscling it around, and how you know, and you know he he's got, he's got a reputation for being a bit of a hard man. But he was he was absolutely fair and square. Like we gave each other quarter, but he drove hard, and you know he beat me on the track. You know we all finished one place behind him, and I was. Fair dues, chap. I, I don't mind giving credit when where credit's due, and I, 
as I always said, I don't mind getting beaten as long as it's fair and square. <laughs> and he was um, he was fair and square, and he was hard, which mm. was uh, what it needs to be. Yeah, no, no, fair enough, mate. No, I appreciate that. And to be fair, I'm 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 fully with you on that. He he is he's properly committed that lad. Um, so with regards to the team, then, mate, BMW. Turkington is obviously the standout team leader for them. Um, can he can he win that fifth title, mate, and uh, be a record breaker? Yeah, they've got continuity. They've got Colin knows the car. They know him. They know what makes it tick. They've got a very strong engine mm. package. Um, he's now got two teammates to back him up instead of one. You know, um, Tom Oliphant. He's got a he's got another season under his belt in the car, so he'll he'll be uh, more comfortable, mm. uh, probably more confident. Um, Steve, uh, Stephen Jelly, he's obviously step, stepping up from the one series, and I think the three series is a is a, a big step forward. And so I think he'll, you know, when you get into a nice car, you know, this you've driven, you know, rock boxes and they're horrible, but you learn a lot more driving a rock box. Not saying the one series is a rock box, but the mm. three series is a quantum leap forward, and mm. I think he'll he'll enjoy it and he'll he'll prosper in it. Yeah, for sure. And I think. I think Stephen might ruffle a few feathers there because on his day, Stephen's a very good... Isn't he the nicest driver on the planet, do you not think? But he, he will go well, won't he? He could ruffle, he could ruffle Oliphant up, actually, couldn't he? Yeah, it depends who you speak to. We've all got our nemesis wherever you sit on the grid, haven't we? But, um, <laughs> yeah, he'll have a go. And um, he's quick. You know, on his day, he's, uh, he's very quick, and, you know, whether he's in, no matter what he's been in. Mm. Um, so... Yeah, I, I wouldn't underestimate any of any of the three of them, but Colin's obviously got to be their focus and will be their focus. Mm. Um, he'll be. He'll, I still think I'm biased, but I still think that the championship is stacked unfairly in rear wheel drive's favour. Mm. You know, they've won the last how many years on the bounce? Um, so I think it's you know it's they're going to be a tough act to beat. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you, mate, on that because it it does. You know, it's always a bit of a question you, you're a bit like oh you know rear wheel drive front wheel drive but you you do think that's the case mate it's not it's not the fact that the whole package has been wrong for some teams it's it or is it just that is there a tire change has there been a change of the how the tire works or is it is it just the accumula accumulation of a lot of things then when it's when it becomes so close paul that you know qualifying is split by hundreds per second mm. you know not not tenths and so and um, it becomes qualifying is everything which is where camo scored because his qualify his one lap flyer he was immense on yeah um and if you qualify at the right end of the grid then you're there you know so if you're there at that end of the grid at the end of the first lap and the problem is they could qualify row five or six mm. and by the by the third turn they'd be in second or third place mm. any of the rear wheel drives and the officials you know, we beat them up until you wouldn't believe. And, um, you know, complaining and complaining about it. They changed it halfway through last year, but then they changed it back. Still stacked in a rear-wheel drive favour. We always say a great, drop, a great start in a front-wheel drive is the same as an average start in a rear-wheel drive. You know, they can just consistently rattle them out. Um, mm. You know, get, you know, getting a front-wheel drive off the, off the line is probably one of the hardest things to do mm. in this racing, you know, consistently. And... Um, I still think that's that's not right. That's not correct, but mm. it's what we got. So you just got to get on with it. Yeah, it's always been an age-old problem. Isn't it? I remember the West Surrey cars when they were three series, and I was in your old Integra, and you could see Collard, who was probably starting like seventeenth, and you were fifth. He'd come past you by turn one, <laughs> but he was a great starter. And I know what you mean because they couldn't really regulate it back then. I think they tried to put a higher gear in back then but now you can you can obviously regulate it with boost pressure and and things like that and like you say they uh they've got things to play with and i'm sure they'll um i'm sure they'll leave they, they're out. doing and they say they're constantly looking at it but um yeah it, it is what it is mate so we just got to get on with it yeah no fair enough fella listen um team dynamics your team um sheds coming back into the fold big shock we know all about that i'm not going to ask about the politics of it uh and dan robottom who i think He's very much a very underrated driver. Do you agree with me on that? Yeah, I, I think um, Dan has not. He's always been in an underfunded scenario hmm. in, in his car career. He was ultra quick. And people who've known him in karting uh, really rate him. Yeah. Um, his feet are on the ground. I like his attitude. Um, 
I think he could be a good dark horse. Um, he's obviously only done one real hard season, mm. um, and which was, you know, mixed results uh, with Sisley. Um, don't know why. Um, well, I, I do know some of the background to it. Otherwise, we wouldn't, <laughs> we wouldn't have gone with him. But um, <laughs> the uh, but I think he could spring a few surprises. We're not expecting him to to win a title mm-hmm. or you know. Uh, being the top three at the end of the year, but it was, I think he's just get his head down and it, it's super close out there. Just see what results we can get for him. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to be in this corner fighting, is you know from from the back as well. So mm. I'm going to be doing what I can do to, for the both of them, really. Yeah, because any Cleo guys I speak to do tell me that he is like he is super fast, and they didn't understand why he wasn't a, a lot quicker than he was in his season in touring cars. But you know yourself, mate. Your first season in touring cars is kind of free, isn't it? Because you're finding your feet. You're finding your feet, and it's a relationship with your engineer. Mm. You know, the engineer has got to understand everyone's got a different style of driving, the same as you've got a different style of handwriting, and what makes you fast will not necessarily make me fast. You'll have a, a base setup, but you've got to have that that real bond and understanding, which I've had with Barry over the years, Um you know, and it's really paid dividends. He knows what I like and what I don't like and what, what will make me fast. So, mm. and if you don't get that, if you don't click into that, um, then you're, then, you know, it's, it's, it's a hard season ahead. Yeah. Um, listen, talk me, talk me through sheds, mate. Is he going, he had a terrible time in world touring cars for whatever reason. Um, there is no doubt that that guy is one of the best British touring car drivers ever to grace the grid. Um, do you see him as faster than Camish? Uh, a bit off Camish? Is he stronger in areas? Do you see him just plug in and play, crack on? What do you see from him? This is a, a big debate we've gone over and over and over. You know, um, the one thing when I when I broke my shoulder beginning of last year, he'd come out of two real rotten years in in World Touring Cars, hmm. and so we had to line him up to take my place because I wasn't too sure whether I was going. Well, I wouldn't have made the first race. Yeah. You know, you put him in the in the um, in the car first test at Donington, and he matched Dan, having never sat in it before. You know, they say he sat in a Honda, but it was an FK2, not an FK8. Mm. So he's, he's there. I mean, as we say, uh, uh, you know, a calm sea doesn't make a skilled sailor. So I always say you you learn a lot more from being in a rotten car or mm. a car that's not working than you do from a good car. Mm-hmm. And he's had two rotten years. I think he'll be he'll come back. He'll be very hungry. Um, you know, he's a good racer. You put him in the pack, and it's it is close out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think um, you know it could go anyway. You, I always say you need luck in this game as as much as everything else because the racing's so brutal and so physical. Mm. Um, you know, and I think Flash he's hungry. Yeah. You know, he's hungry. He's 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 a he's another Ashley something. Mm. He always has been. To be fair to him, isn't he? I've raced against Sheds late two thousands and. He just, I mean, there's not many people. Like you say, there's, I can only think of Ash Sutton and Shedden who I would, I'm would. i worried about going toe-to-toe because you know whether it's for the last point on the on the, uh, on the the grid or, you know, uh, a podium spot. He ain't going to, he ain't going to back off. <laughs> you could put Eugene O'Brien in there, but he was a bit <laughs> Or Anthony Reeve. <Reed. laughs> <laughs> Eugene and Reedy celebrity yeah. death match. Oh my god. Oh, god! oh, you've sent shivers down my spine, Matt. That's horrible. Um, no, he's definitely going to be. Uh, he's going to be your title challenge, isn't he for sure? Um, well, I don't know. I mean, over one lap, Camo is just he's immense, which he's proven. Mm. Um, you know, we're gutted not to have him, but um, yeah. it, it, it is as it's panned out. So yeah, no, of course, mate. I understand that. Um, Laser Tools Racing Infinity. Ash Sutton, team leader. We spoke about Ash. No more to say about him. Um, Aiden Moffat. What do you think of Aiden? Well, Aiden, Aiden's super quick, and I I don't know whether he knows why he's quick or when he's quick. Or um, I think he was thrown at the deep end with with Ashley because Ashley is he's ballistic in a rear wheel drive. Mm. He's, he's pretty, pretty handy in most things, to be mm. fair. But he, he just seems to have got the drop on real drive. And it was, it is a different kettle of fish. And, you know, Aiden had obviously been honing himself in front wheel drive. And then to, it was, I don't think he did a bad job because it's like when we went to run an Aussie V8s, you could put a quick lap in 
but I wouldn't know why I quick or how I quick put a quick lap in. Mm. And it was you're out your comfort zone. And I think Aiden was a bit of that last year, and but he kept his head down, uh, kept out of trouble. And I think mm. the easiest thing would have been to switch back to front wheel drive. Um, but he's not. He's, he's he's sticking at it, and I think that will that will pay dividends. And I think he'll be mm. a lot closer to Ashley this year. I think Ashley will be firing all cylinders right from the word go. But I think Aiden will be a lot lot more of a pain for us to deal with this mm. year um, mm. because he's got a season. You know, every track he was arriving at, he was arriving at green in that car. Mm. So because especially of lockdown and all the rest of it, you know, mm. in a compressed season, yeah, um, it was it was going to be a tough year for him and. You know, he's got through it and, uh, you know, n- now he's done the hard first year, you y- should pay dividends for him. Mm, I couldn't have said that about myself, to be fair, mate. No, I'm fully with you on that. And I think Aiden's such a nice guy as well, isn't he? He's just a, a proper good lad, gets on with it, um, and he's happy to be there as well. And I think that, that says a lot for the lad. Um, what about then, fella? Carl Bordley, just quickly. Um, Carl puts in some decent performances now and again. I, I noticed a few times he outqualified the team Parker BMW um, of Stephen Jelly. He can he can pedal, can't he? He can pedal. I, I didn't really get to race much with him last year, so I can't really comment on that side. But mm. um, I think he's, he's going to be where Aiden was last year, <laughs> which yeah. is it's going to be you know he's okay. He's coming coming from rear, rear wheel drive uh, rather than front wheel drive. Um, it'll be interesting to see how he gets on uh, because visually the Infinity looks a very different animal to the the BMW on the on track three or one series, mm. um, the way it, it handles, the way it, it works. Um, so that will be, um, it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. I think he'll, he could surprise us with some really good results. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Mm. First time he drives that infinity, mate, he'll probably feel like it's falling over when he turns right or left <laughs> compared to that one series. Probably, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear mate, we'll see how he gets on. Um, Motorbase MB Ford, obviously Jake Hill is the uh, is the top man in that team, um, as far as I'm concerned. Jake, you know he's driven your uh, your old FK2 Hondas, quickest kid in the world, isn't he? As a youngster, he's very fast. Is this his chance to put a proper title assault together, mate? Well, the the I mean, the Ford has got a, he's got a missile of an engine, mm-hmm. uh, the Mountie engine. So, uh, and that's all it's been. It's always been its um its ace card. Mm. Um, it'll be interesting to see. Um, mm. who knows? I mean, um, Rory extracted some good results out of it. You know, Matt Jackson's extracted some amazing results out of it over the years. Mm. Um, championship contender. I don't know. Mm. Winning races, yes. Mm-hmm. Championship contender, I don't know. Mm. Um, it's how it's going to cope with weight, you know, because the weight's going up this year to 75 kilos. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's always looks, you know, Rory was always teaching on the edge of, of winning races or having the biggest accidents in the world. And But, but was that a reason, not for Rory, what, was that a reason because the car was always on the edge? I don't know. Mm. Um, having not driven it. Um, we'll see. We'll soon find out, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think it says... And this is no disrespect to Ollie Jackson, but it shows you how good that car is. And I know the Mountie engine has always been strong in whatever form it's been in, in the in the Focus. But the Focus does seem like a decent chassis. And that looks... Ollie Jackson drove that car really well last year, I thought. Uh, if you've got a good engine... Uh, yeah, he did drive well. And he kept it tight. <clears throat> um, but if you've got a good engine underneath it, you can just keep it tight and... Mm. And point it and squirt it, and there's no way you're going to get past people uh, mm. because you're going to run on them. So, mm. um, yeah, I, you know, Ford, I, I, I don't know, motor based Ford. They've obviously got four cars now. Um, so it'll be, uh, you know, they've got, I can come, they've got more allies on the grid, but then they've got more people to, to look after and, mm. you know, mm. make sure they're in good fettle. So it'll yeah. be it'll be interesting to see how they get on. Yeah, no, that is a, that's a fair point. Just a quick word on um, Sam Osborne and Andy Neat. I know Sam goes about his business, loves his racing. I'm sure he'll start to, you know, come on and, and get up the grid, interestingly, to see how he gets on with that car. Um, Andy Neat comes in for a lot of criticism. Um, seems to, you know get on with the job and just gets on with it really i mean i've seen different things with andy like 
he was running up the front, wasn't he, as Jason's teammate sometimes in the MG and NGTC. Um, and he's, you've got to remember, he's, he's working with a, a titanium rod in his neck as well. I mean, I don't know if I'd want to go racing with that, because if he has a big shunt, he could actually be out the game, couldn't he? I think he's been told that. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> with Sam, it'd be interesting to see how he compares, as with Jake. You know, they're obviously jumping out of the FK2 Honda, which was, um, I think it was one of the best cars, NGTC cars ever. Yeah. Um, so it'd be interesting to see how they compare. The end. They're obviously going Toker engine to Ford, and they're going FK2 chassis. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they've both got to say. Um, as for Andy, I think he gets an unfair rap. Mm. Um he loves his racing, you know, he's trying hard. Um, you know, people don't realise it's not about I always said people come to me, Oh, my husband could make a great great driver because he likes overtaking race driver because he likes overtaking everyone in front of him. <laughs> it's not about that. It's not about driving fast, it's not about ragging a car, it's about I always said make it's about making a car dance. Mm. You know, and you know, it's because at the back of Thruxton the car's so on its tiptoes and it's where Camish was really genius at, at finding the grip with his with his left foot braking, alter the attitude of the car to in, alter the weight onto the front or the rear end mm. to increase the grip on that end. And it's about that. And Andy's had a couple of problems in the middle of the pack where he's been qualifying. It's rough. Mm. It's horrible. It's brutal. And it might look easy, easy on the TV. It's not. Mm. Um, and so your your back's against the wall a bit back there. And um Mm. I think give him another year in it. I think I think he'd I don't think he'd want to roll around the back indefinitely. I think he wants he'll probably give himself another year and then see how it is. I mean the racing is brutal out there. Mm. Um and uh I'd say give him a crack. Mm. You know, give him a fair fair crack. The problem is the grid is, is very, very competitive at the moment. Mm. Mm. It is definitely good. Andy, and and he's got historical injuries, you know, in his neck. Mm. You say from you know when he went into the the pit wall at Silverstone all those years ago. So he's mm. um, yeah, yeah. You've got to, you've got to say fair play for still racing. I'll be really honest with you, mate, because I don't know if I'd I'd be up for that. And he and he obviously has the passion for it, doesn't he? But uh, but like you say, he does get a lot of criticism online. And I'm not a, I'm not I'm no friend of Andy Neats to be honest. But I do sometimes look and think, my word. Um, but that's just the demographic. Yeah, cheer, cheer, cars, cheers me up, actually, because me and Jason get a fair bit of, <laughs> fair bit of digging online. So, for one thing, life's not too bad. I look at Andy's Twitter feed. <laughs> but but, but he, does, he does get an unfair rap. Like, but I've been there, and Jason's been there as well. So he's, he's in good company on yeah, that yeah. respect. I definitely got out at the right time, mate, when social media was starting to make a real... Uh, 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 real headway into battering drivers. I I got out at the right time because you imagine if I was still driving, mate. I'd, I'd I'd have people outside my house, grid girls especially, coming to kill me. Paul, from what I've heard, you've got a queue of grid girls outside your house already, <laughs> still, mate. So <laughs> I've got a ring doorbell. There's no way that's happening. Anyway, right, moving on. Um, BTC Racing Honda. This is a good one. Um, Cookie Creasy and now Jade Edwards. Am I right in saying they've changed engines? They've gone to Swindon. Yes, they have. Correct. Is, is yes. that is that known, mate? I don't. <laughs> should I be saying that? Uh, well, I guess so. Yeah, I, I don't know whether they broadcasted or not. Mm, well. They wanted to do something. They felt they they got absolutely everything um, that we had, mm. or they have had for the last two years. Um, and they had a great great uh, 2019, and they had a a bit of a rotten. Um, 2020 mm. until the back end and then josh scored some wins for him mm. um but i i don't know they wanted to do something different mm. to, to beat us i think really otherwise you know that i think steve dubman um the boss there he he had to be seen to be doing something different yeah um he's a he's a competitive guy so mm. um we'll see yeah you know it'll be a direct comparison with the toka to the honda engine the honda engine's a great engine mm. Um, but the, I think the Toku engine was performing really well, you know, as, as Ingram proved in the Toyota. Mm. No, that's true, mate, yeah. I, I, it's just interesting to see your point of view from it, because, um, like you say, it was always a Neil Brown engine uh, Honda, um, and, like you say, you'd like to think the cars were exactly the same. Well, they looked the same, but you don't, you know, you never know what's going on behind closed doors or whatever. But, I mean, out of the three drivers, Cookie, Creasy and, and Jade, what, what do you make of... Of of those three people, what I mean, Cookie's 
silly fast, isn't he? You'll have seen his data, I'm sure. He's quick. Cookie, I mean, you, Cookie's been teammates with Ashley and he, he matched him, I, I'm pretty sure, you know, race for race, mm. qualifying for qualifying. So mm. he'll, um, he's, he's a fiery character. He's, he's pretty hungry as well. Well, very hungry. Mm. Um, it'd be interesting. He, he's obviously got to lead the charge with, um, with the, the development and engine side now. So, um, uh, Michael, he's just, he's like him. He's just so tough to be racing out there, isn't he? So, um, he's a real nice character. And I think another season under his belt, he knows the car. So, you know, <clears throat> hopefully for him, he'll, he'll be a little bit stronger. Jade is obviously new for the championship. She's competitive. Um, and I, I, I don't know. I haven't seen a race much. I, I didn't get to race against her last year, but, um, you know, it's it's great that there's, there's a female coming into the championship. It's good good for versatility or diversity, isn't it? Or I think of the word I was looking for. Mm, yeah, and I think as well, you know, it, it, you're dead right, mate. It, Jade, I think Jade will surprise a few people, you know. I think Creasy was... I've seen a few races from Creasy, like at Thruxton, and he was right on the back of Chilton and, and uh, Cookie's teammates. He was there or thereabouts. So on his day, he can do it. And I can, I can see Jade maybe midway to the end of the season getting getting in amongst them in the midfield i think she'll surprise people but early doors i think it'll be a struggle i think it will be it'll be hard at thruxton going to thruxton for your first race no thanks yeah i think jade will probably surprise a few people's egos <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job i'm not out there this year, so, yeah um yeah I, it's it's gonna be i mean it's gonna be tough for um our dan robotham you know, first race at Thruxton because you are proper, proper committed around there. I remember after qualifying last year, you know, it, it, Tom Ingram just just picked me and Dan, mm. um, and we're doing the post qualifying interviews, and he goes, "I hate qualifying here. I hate it because you are so on the edge." And I went, "No, you don't. You love it. That's why you do it." <laughs> and um, Thruxton qualifying is one of the ones I love the most. I don't know why. <sighs> you think, you know, being the old guard. Is, mm. is where you, you know, in the big commitment stuff, you struggle. But that's where I actually scored last year. Mate. So, and uh, I could match Dan. So, I don't know. I, um, I just on that note, <clears throat> I I never did one more lap than I, that I didn't need to do at Thruxton. And it was, you know, from racing against me there in the Integra and the Astra, I was always decent. I got on the podium twice in the two races against Muller and Thompson back in the day when you were at Honda. But... Mate, I I could not. St all I could think all I could think of was I can smell that left front tire <laughs> going through the car. I hated it. Oh God, not for me. Yeah, man. noises, smells, everything. I love it. I love it around there. It's one of my favourite circuits. But uh, just because oh, it's old school, yeah, big commitment. It is. It is. You're right. Um, Speedworks Motorsport Toyota, big changes there. Obviously, Tom Ingram's gone. Rory Butcher comes in and has Sam Smelt, who's back in touring cars uh, for a second time. But Rory Butcher, I highly, highly, highly rate. The only thing I think, Matt, and I don't know if you agree with this, that is a Tom Ingram car. That's going to take a while to get set up for Rory. Am I right? Am I wrong? What do you think? Um, we said pretty similar here. You know, I think, I think um, Christian and, and the guys at Speedworks have done a mega job with a one-car outfit because... I've been in a one-car outfit, mm -hmm. and it, it, it is tough. But I think Ingram is very underestimated. Um, I think he pulled results out of that car, which were never in it mm -hmm. uh, at, at points. And um, he flattered us at some races. But then it, it was a good, solid car and well-run all year. So um, it's a tough act for Rory to follow because, um, um, you know, Rory drives on the ragged edge, but Tom's seriously does as well <laughs> so uh yeah for sam to come in i think he's just got to keep his head down mm. stay out of trouble if he can um and pick up the experience of, of year one and look for you know for the following year because this is going to be a mm. okay he's been in it before but he's going to be you know straight in at the deep end with that thing especially because rory's going to be straight on it mm. um it'll be interesting to see how he goes mm. um you know the car will be strong it'll it'll be there you know they've got extra backing off Toyota now. Um, and Rory's got another season on his belt. He's driven now different cars. He's now knows what the Honda should feel like. He knows what the Ford should feel like. So he's now going to different things. So that all, that, you know, that pool of experience he can draw on, you know, when trying to, when Tom's been, was a little bit, he was uh, focused on just the Toyota. So only know what the Toyota was like mm. or the, or the events before it. Um, 
we've always probably got a bigger pool of information to pull on, but um, it'll be a tough act to follow, sure. Yeah, no, definitely. And there's a lot of, it'll be a lot about engineering, I think, in that team. And there's one person I really rate um, as a person who understands engineering, that's Christian Dick. So I know they've lost Spenny to uh, Tom Ingram. He's took his engineer with him to accelerate, but it'll be definitely how they get that car working. Because I remember looking in that car and even the pedals and the seat and the steering wheel just looked bizarre to me how they were set up um it was like something out of a short oval <laughs> racing series so there'll be a there'll be a lot of stuff to do there like you say but rory's the man is need to do that i'm sure he'll sort it um accelerate motorsport mate uh obviously ingram's gone there now chris smiley um an absolute nutter of a driver seems to get results when he when he can um jack butel second season in touring cars and rick parfit jr i think rick parfit hasn't been to hardly any circuits in the country uh as of yet british gt champion so obviously got pedigree but um tom ingram like you just touched on he's gonna he's gonna put that team up the front isn't he do you think do you reckon i don't know i think he, he could get good results and win races but not not a champion I, i'd be i'd be surprised if it was a championship contender i, I don't think they understand mm. The car. This is only my my yeah. personal opinion. I I don't think they've got their head around the car. It'll be different now where they've got a good driver engineer mm. package going together, and we've all got the same box of bits really. Yeah. Um, and engines and power and tires and so the, the, there is no reason why anybody is not at the front. Mm. But you know I I don't know. It's with the aero with all the rest of it. I, I, yeah. I think they see Tom as the key to unlock lock the the door to ultimate success and championship i don't know whether he i don't know whether he will be i'm that's mm. not, not taking anything away from tommy he's he's one of the elite drivers in the championship and, yeah. and again i don't want to disparage the team but i almost think it's a shame tom's a bit wasted there mm. um but um it'll be interesting to see how they go yeah i think maybe good for an outside bet i think they'll move up a bit but i'm i'm with you i think if they win a race it it'll probably early doors if it's an early doors win it'll be reverse grid and that's again not being disrespectful people don't understand the aero and everything else that goes into the to the race cars it's you know it needs a lot of development doesn't it to to win off the front row of the grid you know in the first race of the weekend do you do you think that's right with the level of competition out there, it's not an easy task because the the last few bits are the hardest bits to find. Um, so, yeah, they, they're going to have their work cut out this year. Mm. Um, you know, and again, not taking anything uh, with Butel. Um, it, everyone seems to struggle as number two to Adam Morgan in Sisley. I don't know why. Mm. Um, so he had a he had a bit of he was thrown in the deep end late uh, last year. So it'd be interesting to see now he's sort of got a year under his belt, coming back to the tracks at the same speed and, you know, the same car and grip um, levels. Hopefully he can, you know, can do a bit better. He did a great job keeping his nose clean last year, considering he was in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, uh, it'll be an interesting combination, but obviously Tom's going to be leading the charge. Yeah. Um, it depends what support and how much the other teammates can push him to, mm. to help him really. But, I suppose he didn't have that at Toyota and he, he still extracted good results himself. Yeah, for sure. Um, just a little word on Rick Parfit Jr. Great to see him in in there. I love Rick. Um, I think he knows that it's going to be difficult. Um, how difficult do you see it being for him? I, I love Rick. He's one of the nicest blokes out. And, you know, I spoke to him all months ago and I actually tried to talk him out of it. I said, <laughs> do you really want to do this? I said, the racing is actually not fun. You know, we all do it. It's a great adrenaline rush. And I said, it would be hard to go to any other championship where you get the same adrenaline and rush and buzz because of the ferocity of it all. But I said, do you really, do you really want to do this? And he went, yeah, yeah, I really want to do it. So fair play. Um, he's under no illusion of, of what's, you know, the challenge in front of him. And I think he's looking to pick up experience and stay out of trouble in year one and, and then build on that, really. Mm. Do you think then, sorry, I'm just eating a little bit of soaring so my, my sugar level's going a bit low. Um, do you think that, um, do you think that Chris Smiley can actually push Tom Ingram to the, to I think to Chris, is, Chris can be quick, but I don't know whether he knows why he's quick. Mm. <laughs> it's one of those, it's one of those other, yeah, which I mentioned before. Um, he can be, he can be super fast and 
I don't know. There was there was a breakdown in from what we understand. There was a breakdown in communication between each side of the garage between him and 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 Senna mm. Proctor last year, which was sad to see considering it's a new fledgling team trying to learn that mm. they weren't communicating. So um, they both had good days. Uh, they both had some rough weekends. Um, he's obviously got a the ace card. Um, Chris has got, he's got a season in the car. He understands the car. He knows what to expect at each circuit Yeah. over and above the other guys. So um, that'll be his. Um, hopefully they can, hopefully for them, they can start to share because I think he'll, he'll learn more off <clears throat> Tom potentially than the other way around. So he's just, they've all got to get on really. Yeah, no, for sure. That'll be what it's about when it relationships. Um, quickly then, um, Sisley Motorsport, 330 IBMWs. Should West Surrey be scared? Tom Chilton, oh, can he can he be the man who's going to really stick it to Adam Morgan? Um, I think people underestimate Adam Morgan. You know, he was G fifty five champion, wasn't he in Genesis? So he knows he's driven rear wheel drive before. He knows rear wheel drive. You know, he's driven GT cars. He's not he's not a mug. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, the way we the way we looked at it, we've always given everything. Um, to whichever team, whether it be Eurotech, whether it be um, BTC, they they get exactly the same. We always thought Dick Dick doesn't like to play as fair at West Surrey, and he would never ever. He's old school. Mm. You would never get the same kit as they as West Surrey would. And for for dynamics, we always thought, well, we're fighting West Surrey. Hopefully, yeah. Um, so that if Dick does his job, then that takes Fizzly out of the game. <laughs> you know, I'm just looking at it brutally and, and, and honestly. Um, but I think, um, unfortunately, both Tom and Adam are, are, are quick lads, mm. and so it's another two real wheel drives on the on the grid, which is a pain in the ass for us because they'll be up there. Um, mm. Team do a solid job; they turn out nice cars. Um, and if if Dick's fair with them, then they'll they'll be a pain. I mm. think Adam could be. <clears throat> up there in the championship it'll be you know tom's obviously coming into a new team he's just got to get a relationship with an engineer mm. um and they've got to work together really yeah no no i'm fully fully with you on that definitely matt um last two mate quickly team hard coopers firstly will we see them cars um because they're gray and look like tarmac uh secondly will they be quick <laughs> i don't know you know who knows um it's got the, it's got the right sort of wheelbase the same sort of similar sort of wheelbase to the fk2 mm. um it's the most draggy car out there um mm. so in the in the quick quick stuff they might where they've been used to the super slippery um cc you know um vw uh they're going to the other end of the scale now mm. um so that could be a bit of an achilles heel for them yeah um I don't know. Obviously, they've got Jack Goff leading the charge. Uh, Jack's, Jack's again, one of the top guys in the championship. He could win a championship in the right car. It'll be interesting to see how they go. I mean, it's throw the dice. You don't know. It's a little bit of it's luck. Yeah. You know, when we when we came out with the FK2, we hit the sweet spot early on. And, you know, we, we rode off the back of that for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so a little bit whether they've done the homework and done the sums right and... Then it's, as I go back to the old thing, it's a competitive grid. Yeah. So it's, it's not going to be, no one's going to roll over for him. Yeah. Aaron Taylor Smith's no mug, is he? And he's won races in British touring cars. Do you think Jack will be clear number one, Taylor Smith number two, Glengetty third, and Hamilton fourth? How do you see that in, in terms of pecking order? Well, it depends who you speak to, doesn't it? I think it's, uh, they've all been quick and they can all win races. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be, Whoever's going to be fastest and get the best results will become number one. I don't think there's any definitive pecking order. Mm. Um, but obviously, I know, I know, uh, I know Jack mm. um, and what he's capable of and what he's, you know, the results he could get out of a Honda, yeah. um, which, were, which were pretty impressive at Eurotech. So, um, probably, I don't know. But mm. you know, Aaron, Glenn, you know, uh, Nick, they can all have a great day. So, um, yeah. I don't think. I think be surprised if they're up there fighting for the championship, but um, they could get some good results, and you know they could win races. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> just the the last thing on on Team Hard, 
they're obviously they're, they're just they're survivors for me um tony gillam survivor they always seem to just be out there get get there and uh and get you know get the job done so to speak they got a new car but what i wanted to ask you about was was nick hamilton what as a driver what is your take on nick hamilton because i'll tell you what i think of him um i absolutely hate what i see on the internet about him because it doesn't matter whether he's a nice lad or not and he is one of the nicest lads i know but he has cerebral palsy and he can hardly drive that car mate and you as a driver, I love to ask this question as a, as a three-time champion, mate. <clears throat> How do you put into words what that lad can actually achieve? Because for me, to get on that grid is is something special anyway, because he can hardly walk. Yeah, he's, he's, I mean, he's, his determination is, is second to none, uh, what he's done. And, and again, it um, it opens up to, it up to a new sector, that's showing that... Mm. <clears throat> doing sport with disabilities it is possible um and he does and he can be quick yeah um and when you consider how he has to drive the car um you know in this he doesn't drive it differently in 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 that respect but he has his seat position mm. is um not conventional mm. um the way he has to sit and you know and he needs a, a sort of bigger brake pedal a hand clutch mm. i think he's got a hand clutch yeah um and so that's, you know, it'd be tough for anybody to do that. You put me in it, Jason in it, Colin in it, Ashley in it. Mm. It's, it it's not going to be easy. So um, you just have to say fair dues, well done. Um, and, you know, anybody who's on about social media, they're just trolls out there. I get it. Mm. Andy Nate gets it. Jason gets it. Unfortunately, Nick, he shouldn't get it, but he does because mm. there's just, low lives out there who like to dish it out and then when you see them face to face they won't say boo to a goose yeah um mm. you know they'll come and smile and ask for your autograph after they've been dissing you on the internet mm. so mm. i think mean, good luck to him yeah i hope he does i hope he does really well yeah me too mate i'd love to see him have a, <clears throat> a real strong season i think he's a great guy and a fantastic ambassador like i think if he just got one result the shot in the arm and the buzz would be amazing for him mm. you know yeah. and that can happen in in, in BTCC, anything, you know, anything can happen. Mm, yeah, definitely, mate. And it often does. Yeah. You know, no, you're dead right. It does look at what I did at Alton Park in 2002. <laughs> <laughs> you, you laced our drinks. That's what you did. Mate, you didn't need your drinks lacing. You did that yourself the night before in Liverpool. <laughs> that was Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Was Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, that was Jimmy. That was Jimmy. Um, okay, listen. Right, come here. I know where we're going. Okay, come on. <laughs> I didn't go out that night. <clears throat> um, last... Uh, want to just quickly chat about um, Power Max Racing Vauxhall. A couple of things on this one, Matt. So Plato and Dan Lloyd. Dan Lloyd is pretty good driver. Can he? Can he? Ashley Sutton, Jason Plato. Dan Lloyd is a, is a very good driver. Mm -hmm. I think J Jason's Jason's great, and Jason's. He knows the car, knows the establishment. He can do it blindfolded, backwards, you know, stood on his head. Mm -hmm. But he, what he doesn't, he does get under his skin when, um, if he gets a teammate who's quicker than him. Mm. Um, and uh, I think Danny Lloyd has got the potential to do that. But Jason is back in his his comfort zone of, of being in a front-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. It'll be good to see the politics work out there and, and the competitiveness of the two because I think... Um, Dan Lloyd is, is he's a class act, um, and he's young. He's he's uh, he's keen, and uh, he can win races. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. One with the competitiveness of the two of them against each other on track. It'll be a good good duel that will. Mm. Um, but also the um, the politics in the team, <laughs> inter team politics as well. <laughs> you, you've obviously spoken about this before. I like it, mate. <laughs> um, last bit on that then actually we all know what jason's capable of had a strong end to 2019 that car not to be disrespectful to power match racing has only had i think rob austin in it that was in my eyes a very very good driver and a decent engineer um are they going to have lost speed in that car mate the problem, i think the problem that they've, they've struggled with the last 12, 24 months is funding, you know, or, mm. or lack of funding, which is, 
you know, they've got a, a good crew. It's a, it's a, I think the base of the car is good. They've got a good crew r- running it, but obviously minimal mm-hmm. um, guys where someone like us has been probably excess. Um, so they've been doing a great job with what they what they can get hold of, you know, and, and the funding has been tight there. Mm. Um, I think it's, I don't think it's still mega. Yeah. Um, so I think it'll be getting results rather than challenging for cap championships, mm. um, it, which is a shame because, you know, you get Jason with a sniff of the championship, then, then the horns grow and yeah. he sort of, he comes alive, doesn't he? Um, <laughs> which is what as, as fans, now I can laugh about it. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> not going with him but that's when his horns grow and that's when it he becomes good entertainment to watch yeah. um but yeah give him a sniff of a race when he's still two or three races off 100 and i i think he'll be pretty pretty fired up to to get that magic number of 100 yeah. uh, race win mm, very nice mate um do you think he can win the championship mate mm, n- no okay i think he'd be i think he'd, he'd be a struggle for the championship i think you know, you now got uh, eight rear wheel drives on the on on the uh, mm. on the grid. That'll be that'll be a tough ask, especially off the starts. Yeah, that's that's actually a very good point. Um, final question, Matty. Um, talk me through top four in the championship, mate. One, two, three, four, go, bang. Who's going to win it? Who's going to be second, third, fourth? Oh, blimey. Um, Turks, you've got to put. will be in there. Ashley will be in there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I would say first time Adam Morgan might be up there. Um, and then I would have to put my money on Flash, uh, front wheel drive. All the other front wheel drive players, mm-hmm. okay, Flash is back, new back to Honda and into the FKA. Yeah. But he knows it and the team know him and everything. Everyone else is, is a newbie and it's going to be hard for the front wheel drives to challenge because Rory's new to the Toyota, mm-hmm. Jake's new to the Honda, you know, Tom's new to the the Hyundai, um, mm-hmm. it'll be when real drive teams have got continuity and they've got, I think they've got performance on their side. So um, I think it'll be it'll be a tough season ahead. Wow. Matt, that is just the best preview I could have ever wished for, mate. So thank you so much. Proper, mate. You proper, proper, uh, mate. Do me a favour there. That's wicked. Um, right. I'm going to let you go, fella, because I said 30 minutes of your time and I've, I've took the mickey a bit. So thank you very much. All the best to um, your guys at Honda and Team Dynamics. Send my best to all the boys and girls there. And um, you have yourself a good day, Captain. Cheers, mate. Good nice on you, Paul. Thank you, mate. See you later, Matt. Cheers, mate. All right. Okay, then. Tunes. Um, listen, let's finish it up. Oh, my word. It's pretty good, that, wasn't it? I think that was mega because Matt was very, um, very interesting the way he said about the certain teams and the cars. And he said a few things that, like Adam Morgan, because I don't really, honestly, I, I, I just think they need more time to gel. I think they'd be strong, um, the Sisley BMW, maybe mid to end of year. But he's putting him up there as a, as a championship contender. So I'd love to see that, you know, the, the, the more different names we can get. Interesting what he said about rear wheel drive, uh, rear wheel drive and front wheel drive as well. Um, and the praise he's got for Shedden. Um, and just interesting stuff about Ash Sutton and um, and how soft the Infinity is and how we, we've spoken about that before. But just really interesting stuff. So thank you, Matt Neal. And I honestly wish he, he does come back. I think, you know, like I said before, I'm a massive fan of, uh, of British touring cars, first and foremost. Um, so, yeah, it'll be really, really cool. So, listen, I think <clears throat> it's peace out. That's all done. I made one mark there because I usually forget what I've said. And sorry about eating that saurine as well. Um, my uh, my insulin um, or oh, my sugar levels went a bit low, so I had to scoff that. Um, nothing else to tell you about. It's going to be a good season. Kisses for